CataractCoach.com. How should you remove this plaque? Now, there's certain tries for poster caps or X's, eh, but it's not always that easy, is it? Now, patient already had a prior vitrectomy. Not sure exactly why. Now, the patient had cataract surgery here. The patient is on the table. You can see the cataract has been removed. The gaps or bag is pretty empty here. Going in with the IA probe to try to do this by manual approach to remove that central posterior plaque here. Again, the patient's already had a vitrectomy. You can learn more about vitrectomies at retinarounds.com, our sister channel. It is live. It is right now. You definitely got to check it out. I promise you're going to learn a lot. And now, going back to our case here, again, trying to get that plaque off. And sometimes you can get it off, sometimes you cannot. But keep in mind, how thin is the posterior capsule? Well, at its thinnest point, the posterior capsule is 4 microns. One red blood cell diameter is 7.5 microns. So you're talking about half of a red cell? The red cell radius is what you got for the... That's nothing. I remember, a strand of hair is probably 80 microns. So a 20th the thickness of a strand of hair. Yikes, that's very little. So now, again, trying to get this, you see the wrinkling of the bag. You got to be careful here. So maybe you can do a posterior capsular axis. So that was a good idea. I like the idea here. So a posterior capsular axis can be easy, but it can be hard. And sometimes you never know what you're going to get. Now, in a case like this where there is no more vitreous in the eye, it should be easier, right? Because you're not going to have any vitreous prolapse. The patient already had a full parse plane of vitrectomy. So again, surgeons try to get that piece pushed in here into the aspirator tip of the bimanual IA setup. And kind of going, but kind of not really. And if you keep meddling with it, what's going to happen? It's going to pop, right? So what are you going to do? Let's take a look. And so uh, it's kind of going, kind of not. Now, could you just yag it later? Of course. And after you saw the video from me a few months, a few weeks ago, where I did the same kind of situation, and I just I decided to leave it alone. I can just go back later and do a yag capsule on. I mean, that's what we ended up doing for that patient. Patient ends up being very happy. But here now, look, uh oh. Did you get the piece off? No, you open up the bag. Look, the poster capsule is open now. There comes some viscoelastic out of there, but it's okay. The patient had a full vitrectomy already. The hard part now is going to be, can you get this you know, into a round capsular opening with no weak edges? That's the challenge here. And it may be harder than you think, especially in a post-vitrectomy eye. Ah, there is no anterior hyaloid face. There's nothing to kind of provide any support there. So you got a loosey-goosey capsular bag kind of just floating around in there. And not sure if you can get that into something that's more secure. So that looks okay, right? But you didn't tear the posterior rexus. You just kind of opened it. So you got an opening in the posterior capsule. You can still get your eyeball in the capsular bag. You can put your single piece acrylic lens in the bag right now. It should be fine. Just be very cautious in placing it. Because as you place it, if you manipulate too much in the bag, you can rip that posterior capsule even more so. Now, if you want ultimate safety, certainly you can put a three-piece lens, haptics and the sulcus, optic capture behind the rexus. That'll work great, too. And then you don't have to worry at all about the poster capsule. But let's see what happens here. Here comes a single piece acrylic lens going in the capsule bag. Nice and easy. Okay, that's in the AC first, kind of. Let's get that delivered into the good, right position. Slowly tucking it in. I like the, the maneuvering there. Whoa, capsule opened up more. Look at it. Look at it. Now the capsule opening is much bigger. So I like that the haptics are nine degrees away from that opening. At this point, what do you do? Leave it alone. Right now, there's plenty of support. It'll be fine. And remember the good news. This patient doesn't need a YAG laser capsulotomy later. So at this point, I agree. Leave it alone. Be gentle on the IA to remove the viscoelastic. Gentle. Very little flow. So I'd drop the flow by half. Drop the vacuum by half. Take your time here. And as you aspirate this out, be very gentle don't put pressure on this. You can rip the bag even more. You know what? If you leave a little viscoelastic in the eye, so be it. This is why we've got some diamox. And any viscoelastic behind the optic is really no consequence. It's just going to float around there in the vitreous cavity for a while until it breaks down. So beautiful case. Thank you for sharing this. Remember, check out retinarounds.com. You're going to learn a lot. And you're going to love it almost as much as you love your favorite, cataractcoach.com.